Okay, picking back up with God's book that he titled Isaiah 53 and the Day of the Lord. Dictated to me. I did the typing. He taught me the material first. And uh, just like the Jewish Orthodox, Orthodox Jew <laughs> Judaism, believes uh, God dictated the Torah to Moses. And I suspect the reason for that is, how else could he have that information? Of all, you know, they, they derive 613 laws from the first five books of the Bible, the Hebrew Bible. From just five books, 613 laws from God for the Jewish people. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty clear it didn't come from Moses. And if you would read this proof God gave me, it's impossible that I could have this information and knowledge that uh, no rabbi today or that ever has ever lived or any sage or learned person in the uh, Hebrew Bible has ever known how to figure out 53 and explain it properly. It's not based on a world exaltation that will never come. That Jews for Judaism believes in. And it certainly has nothing to do with the six million people murdered at the Holocaust. I mean, the man is given long life. It makes them many righteous by his knowledge. And six million is not all the Jews gathered as one man back in the 40s. If they had been there as one man, we wouldn't have the Jewish people anymore. Okay. Oh, by the way, God wrote the entire book. The entire book was dictated to one man or another, primarily the prophets. Uh, and any one of the prophets could have done the writings, chronicles and, and such. David may have done, uh, presumably he could have done all the books that he's in. I, I don't know if it's, it started, it's Samuel 2, isn't it? Or Samuel 1 and 2 and Kings 1. He's not in all four of them. Okay, this is where I left off. We're on uh, chapter 21. Now, I've mentioned it's very long. We did it a couple of weeks ago, and there were 11 parts to it. It's five, basically five hours. But uh, it's very interesting. It's good to read because you get to see Rashi and what he says about 53. Being Israel. Actually, he does a better job of it than Jews for Judaism uh, or Toby a singer of Outreach Judaism. But this is, I left off with this. I had gone through my history, my personal history of injuries. Ending, uh, and that was chapter 52, verse 14. And concluded with this paragraph. This is how a man could fit the description of the Lord's righteous servant in Isaiah 53, 14. And just so he shall startle many nations. Kings shall be silenced because of him. For they shall see what has not been told them. Shall behold what they never have heard. And we and then we got into what all that could be. This is fifty two fifteen. So shall he cast down many nations. This is Rashi's version in the Bible he's using, not the JPS. Looks like he doesn't have a very good translation either. So shall he cast down many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For what had not been told them, they saw. And at what they had not heard, they gazed. Rashi, Midrash form. What has not been told them? It's breaking down a verse into parts and then commenting on the different parts. 
This is commentary. Concerning any man they saw in him, their gaze, Midrash, <laughs> commentary, they gazed. So shall he, <laughs> that's his commentary. So shall he cast down many nations. So now, even he, his hand will become powerful and he will cast down the horns of the nations who scattered him. Him would be Israel. Shall shut. They shall shut their mouths out of great bewilderment. And then four, commentary, honor. <laughs> okay. Here's my commentary on 15. And with the 15, the verses from the JPS, Jewish Publication Society, 1985 uh, translation of Hebrew to English, started from scratch. They did it themselves and uh, used professional linguists. I don't know if that's what you call them people trained in linguistics and uh, three rabbis one from orthodox one from conservative one from reform and they did, worked on it for over 30 years from the oldest Hebrew Bible we have the Leningrad Codex just so he shall startle many nations just so we're so appalled at him I was 14. Well, yeah, I mean, how does this fit Israel with the murder of the Holocaust? How? How's he going to startle anybody being murdered, the, the Jewish people? And make the many righteous. Kings shall be silenced because of him. For they, yeah, I don't think we even, I don't know if Toby even covered 52, 13 through 15. I don't know it. I mean, they well have. For the, <clears throat> just so he shall, kings shall be silenced because of him. Nations, the Gentiles. When you see nations in the Hebrew Bible, it means Gentiles. Startled and kings, leaders of nations, silenced by seeing God's righteous servant. God's servant David, a shepherd, Moshiach, and the prophet like Moses as one man. Where's Elijah? Oh, and Elijah. Four righteous servants to come. A description of only one righteous servant. I handle the duties of all four. Because you got to have a description. Even the sages knew that. They, they were saying Moshiach was the man described in 53 over 2,000 years ago. As one man. Okay, we've never heard that. And hearing that God's righteous servant arrives in the time to come of Jeremiah 31. Nobody seems to get that. I've never seen any commentary on it. And the day of the Lord. Arise in the time to come of Jeremiah 31 in the day of the Lord. That God's righteous servant is the only man to come who is described in the scriptures and is inherently and implicitly the anointed one, David, Elijah, and the prophet like Moses, of whom there is no description for identification. That the Jewish people throughout the world will be forgiven by God of all their iniquities and sins by God's written word in the day of the Lord. Nobody's heard that. And if they did hear it, they wouldn't listen to it. In all probability. That heaven is being created for only the Jewish people. It's in the Bible. God says it. He doesn't say it in those exact words, but he does. That God's righteous servant of Isaiah 53 is a Gentile, and I am. The man described in 53 has to be a Gentile. 
He can't be six million murdered uh, Jewish people. And, and that's because God comes from the nations. He comes from Gentile lands, Adam, Adam, founded by the children of Esau, the brother of Jacob who became Israel. And he never married a Jewish woman. All his kids were Gentiles. And that's in another video. I've already covered that. And so, but he's got to have his representation. He's got to have his prophet like Moses. The righteous servant of God of Isaiah 53 is his prophet like Moses. And I've already covered his duties. God dictated two books to me. Well, that's what's unique about Moses. God dictated the Torah to him. That in the Exodus. But of course, we have no need of that today. And it's not just being a leader. Tobias Singer says Joshua was called a leader some 50 times in his book. So, they had to be a leader, but what makes him the prophet like Moses? Moses was far more than just a leader. He had God with him all the time. Within him. Is a Gentile, according to the scripture, in the beginning. That Jesus, being a Jew, cannot be God's righteous servant. That God's righteous servant is familiar with disease and crushed with disease, blemished, and can never be an offer for sacrifice. You think they've heard this? I don't. The nations, the Gentiles, the Christians, that a host of the Lord's host is a man in divine beings. That's in Joshua. That the captain of the Lord's host is a Gentile, host of the Lord's host, and so am I. And a harbinger of God's righteous servant. That would be me, harbinger, a sign, an omen, something like that, a foretelling. Oh, you can find the video on it. That God's righteous servant becomes a man in divine beings. And I know nobody in Judaism knows what that means. They know that Jacob wrestled with the man in divine beings, but the rabbis teach he fought with an angel, wrestled with an angel. No. An angel was there, the angel of God's presence, but so was God. And God spoke to the man and changed the name of Jacob to Israel. The righteous servant becomes a man in divine being. It's the righteous servant, Moshiach. Isaiah 11. The spirit of light is upon him. So God's righteous servant, Moshiach, becomes a man in divine beings when God's spirit, who is the angel of God's presence, the angel of the Lord, and the Holy Spirit. He's an angel and his body is literally the spirit of God. The lights upon him in Isaiah chapter 11 verse 1 and God is in his spirit. God alights upon you too. Could have been in uh, chapter 11 verse 1 but uh, he wanted me to teach you. Nobody's ever heard that. God is in his spirit. When the spirit alights upon you you become a man divine being because God's with him. They're always together. God is in his spirit, just like we are. And that God would really redeem the Jewish people and in the same manner that he did in the Hebrew Bible with one man, Moses. That the time to come of Jeremiah 31 began when the state of Israel was created in 1948. See, a time is coming. The land will bloom again. And that God's righteous, it means the Jewish people have come back. See, a time is coming. They're going to come back to the land I gave them, and then I'm going to come back because I want to live amongst them. I just don't want to live in Europe. God would tell you, and he just did. 
and that God's righteous servant fulfills and completes the remaining six prophecies of God in the day of the Lord. Prophecy four, righteous servants to come. Two covenants. I own both. Isaiah 50. Oh, we were going to stop there, right? Okay, this is going to be a real short video. But uh, I'm going to split this up and start with part. That was part six. So we'll be going into part seven.